The agent at the Crow Agency is Major Malachi Weed. I've let him know you're being assigned to Medicine Lodge on my orders. I expect you should pay him a courtesy call on your way through, but don't let him buffalo you. You answer only to me. I shoved my chair back and got to my feet. All right, I said. When do I leave? Ridgway stood up and came around from behind his desk. He grinned, and his face became a riot of wrinkles. Why, I suppose right after I buy you dinner down at the Early Bird Cafe, he said. You do still eat dinner, don't you? My own grin matched Ridgway's, but without the wrinkles. Oh, yes, I told him. I still eat dinner. Over chicken and dumplings and apple pie, Ridgway filled me in on the details of my travel. I was to put my horses on the evening train out of Silver City and ride the rails as far as Junction, where the Bighorn River meets the Yellowstone. From there, I was to ride south, ford the river at Fort Custer, and continue up the Little Bighorn Valley to the new agency, and then to Medicine Lodge. You can telegraph me when you get there, Ridgeway said. Marshal Brown is expecting you. How will I know him? My question seemed to strike Ridgeway as humorous. The marshal chuckled, and there was a twinkle in his faded blue eyes. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, he drawled. I expect you'll know him all right. At the depot, the flagman helped me load Rutherford and the pack horse into a stock car and invited me to ride the caboose with the crew. There ain't but me, a couple of snipes, and a pusher riding this evening, he said. There was a snake, but he got bumped by the pusher's whiskers. I told him I was much obliged, but I had no idea what he was talking about. I mostly speak English, I said, but it seems like you mostly speak railroad. The flagman laughed. Sorry, deputy, he said. What I said was there was only me, a couple of section hands, and a team leader in the caboose. I said a switchman was going to ride with us, but he got displaced on account of the team leader's seniority. I grinned. Much obliged, partner, I said. That makes it a little more clear. Any of you boys play cribbage? The flagman introduced me to the others, and we shook hands all around. Then he dug up a crib board and a dog-eared deck of cards, and we commenced to pass the time at a penny a point. Those pasteboards had seen better days. They had been used so much they were hard to read, and so limp they were darn near impossible to shuffle. A feller might better have tossed those cards with a salad fork, but we didn't have one of those. Anyway, we played as we traveled. I still lost more games than I won, but I didn't do near as bad as I had with Glenn back in Dry Creek. <laughs>